Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. Today we'll be looking at a very special and highly sought after computer. Some people might even say it's a grail item for them. It's none other than the ZX Spectrum 128K Toast Rack model. This happens to be my favorite Spectrum model. This one in particular is the Spanish version, which has a few surprises up its sleeve. So join me today as we learn more about this fascinating computer and we look at it literally inside and out. So I bought this computer a few weeks ago online. It was listed as untested, so I thought, great, that usually means they don't work. So I can feature it on the channel. It's one of my favorite systems. And then we'll do some repairs in it and it'll make it for a great video. Well, once I got it, I quickly popped it in just to see, and it turns out that really it seemed to work, at least the initial screen with the basic prompt came up. So we may not be doing any hardcore repairs in this video, but rest assured, we'll you know, still have a good look at the computer and put it through its spaces to make sure it does work correctly. All right, let's see what exactly we got. A styrofoam box, this seems in pretty good shape with a nice engraving, Spectrum 128, Investronica. And yeah, there you go. Nice 128K toast rack. We'll have a look at this one in a second, just by itself. But now let's look at what else is in the box. Oh yeah, this is one of the more unique things. It's a numerical keyboard that came with the Spectrum. You hook it up. We'll we'll look at it later. See how we can use this if it works. Um, yeah, standard power supply. We have the cassette cables and the video cable. Oh wow! Look at look at how the cables ate into the styrofoam. That's that's very typical of these kind of computers. Just you know, this kind of cable material reacts with the styrofoam and eats into that. And then unfortunately, sometimes it eats into the cases of the computers themselves. Fortunately, not this case. Let's see what we got here. It looks like oh yeah, two manuals. So yeah, because they were in a hurry to launch it, they included the ZX Spectrum Plus, and then a little add-on for specifically for the 128 with you know very nice in color with things specific to the 128 like the numerical keypad and things like that. So yeah, very nice. What is this? Looks like some kind of a case, like a like a dust protector. Um, I don't think this was standard, but okay. And this again is just the Spectrum Plus uh, tape, so nothing specific to the 128K. Very nice. This computer has an interesting history. It was co-developed by the Investronica team in Spain. They had already helped Sinclair adapt some of the Spectrums for the local Spanish market. It was released in Spain in December of 1985, several months ahead of the UK release later in 1986. Apparently that's because Sinclair still had a bunch of old stock Spectrum Pluses that they wanted to sell for Christmas and not get stuck with them while a better model hit the market. As you can see, the outside is very similar to the Spectrum Plus and it has the distinctive heat sink on the right, which actually helps quite a bit with the heat dissipation for the voltage regulator. So let's give it a try. For now, I have it hooked up through the RF out, which is the worst video quality, but that's all right. Later, we'll try the RGB cable and actually compare the difference in image. And also I've hooked up this switch to the nine volt power line. This version of the Spectrum still doesn't have an on off switch. Actually, I don't think any version of the Spectrum has an on off switch. So I just added this for convenience to turn it on and off. So let's just turn it on and yep, there you go. Um, we get the welcome message in Spanish. So this has a Spanish ROM and yeah, the keyboard seems to work. Just fine. Yeah, so as I suspected, it appears to work. So now let's try it with a diagnostics run. And it runs the diagnostic run. There we go. Just need to wait a little bit. It's just in the ULA now, I believe. And there it goes now through memory tests. Everything seems to be fine now.
Looks like it's all good. Time to open it up. Oh, check this out. The seal is still intact, so nobody's been in this computer before. Now we open it up, being extra careful with the keyboard membrane. Usually in Spectrum's membranes can degrade and become very brittle. Fortunately, in the 128K toast rack, the heat dissipation is a lot better, so they last a lot longer. In this case, the membrane looks great, so that's very good news. The insides should look familiar if you've opened up other Spectrums before. The thing that stands out the most is the ROM with the big gold Derby label. That's because Derby was the code name for this project. Next to it, we have the CPU Z80, like all Spectrums. On the left, we have the biggest chip on the board, the ULA. And right underneath, we have the 128K of RAM made out of 16 ICs of 8 kilobytes each. Next to it is the AY sound chip. Right next to the Z80, it's the ZX8451 chip. That's a custom chip that combines a lot of the logic for addressing the memory. And then to the right, we have the voltage generation circuitry that generates all the voltages the board needs from the nine volts of the input. Overall, it's a really nice laid out board, although it has a few funny arrangements of components, clearly showing that they were in a hurry and they had to make some bug fixes after the board was laid out in design. So I thought it would be interesting to look at the ZX Spectrum 128K in context of the Spectrums that came before and the ones that came after. And even though this was made at a very particular point in time and it was made by, by a different team, there's some very clear similarities and, and evolutions. So here's the, the 128K board that we've seen. And I'm going to pull in the last of the 48K. So the, this was from a Spectrum Plus. This is the model that came right before the 128K. And as I said, we, we see some very clear similarities. We have we have the Z80, we have this other chip that has the uh, a lot of the logic for memory addressing. We have the ROM right there. We have the same voltage generating circuit. We have the same RF um, out. So this is how memory was structured in the early spectrums. We have the lower 16K and then the 48K expansion. This is all using the 4116 memory with all the weird voltages and all those things. That totally changed in this one. So now we have uh, 128K in, in the memory is the 4164. Yep, correct, which only uses five voltages. Um, it's interesting that the layouts is kind of funky. So this is like a little higher up in here. I don't know if there were some leftover issues from here or they were just in a rush, but yeah, we have the, the 16 ICs are actually those, but then that is not one, even though it looks like one. So it's, yeah, the, the arrangement's a little weird in there. Some of the other changes are the new ULA. So this one is bigger than this one. That's the traditional one, or that's the one that they've had up until now. And then another big change is this. They got rid of the speaker and the internal beeper and they replaced it with an ay sound chip and no onboard speaker so the sound actually comes out through one of those yeah on it over there so this is the model that came before what came after this well the came that came after that was the first spectrum plus two so this is after the Amstrad purchase of Sinclair. And we see that it's still very similar. I think this model was designed very quickly from this one. So what, what are the similarities? We'll still have the Z80. We have the same, uh, the same chip as this one. We have the same memory, just laid out in a much nicer way. We have the same large um, ULA. We preserve the AY chip. So it's very, very similar, just the layout is a little different, but the same components are still there. The same voltage generation circuitry over there. 
So when people ask me, you know, which spectrum they should get, yes, this is my favorite model, but if you can't get this one, the plus two gray model is this one, is very, very similar to this one. Once you go to the plus two black or the, you know, the plus two A, it actually changes completely. The memory is totally different. The ULA disappears as is like here and it becomes part of an ASIC chip. A lot of the logic in the board is inside that chip. The voltages come from an external power supply. So it really, it's a whole different ballgame. There's a big change between this plus two gray and the plus two black. But these two are actually surprisingly similar. There we have a full evolution. We start with a 48K Spectrum Plus, the 128K, and then going to the plus two gray. Let's have a look at the video options of the ZX Spectrum 128K. Up until now, Spectrums only had an RF out video signal. And well, the quality left much to be desired. And we have the same thing here. So this is what we saw earlier. Fortunately, starting with this model, Spectrums also offer RGB out. So we have the other port in here, that's the RF out, and that's the RGB out. As you can see, it's a special connector. And so if we have that connector, which is right here, then we can send the signal, the RGB signal directly from the computer to the TV via SCART connector. So that gives her much better image quality. One thing to watch out for, though, is that unlike later plus two spectrums, there's no audio out from this port. For that, this cable needs to have a special audio cable and an audio jack, which we hook up to the audio out of the computer right there. So it's a little cumbersome, but in the end, it's great. The image quality is great, and it brings the sound through the SCART connector as well. So. Let's plug in both of them and run some tests to see the difference. Here's the start screen. On the left, we have the RF out, and on the right, the RGB out. Here's the same thing, just much closer, and oh wow, the difference is so clear. And here's a real test case of a game, and again, the right is so much clearer, none of those ghosting artifacts. So perhaps one of the most distinctive features of this spectrum is its numeric keypad. This keypad came standard in, with the Spanish model, and I believe it was optional in the UK model. And it's just numeric keys plus some operators, and you know it doesn't. It just sits next to the main computer, and it attaches with this almost like phone-like cord with this funky connector. So let's plug it in and try it out. So one thing to watch out for, which happened to me the very first time I got this computer, is that you may plug it in, turn on your spectrum, and then you're gonna start typing something in your fancy new numeric keypad, and oh, oh, oh no, it doesn't work. Uh, yeah, it works fine, it's just it doesn't work in this mode for whatever reason. You have to go into immediate edit mode, which you enter by pressing Shift and 1, and notice the cursor changes to the bottom of the screen. And now, yes, you can finally type things with a keypad. And by default, it, act, it acts as a calculator. It even uses the last result, uh, just like a real calculator would. And you can use it as a, as a really fancy calculator. Beyond this, there aren't tons of uses for it. I mean, yes, you can use it to enter lots of numbers in spreadsheets and things like that. Or maybe if you're typing magazine listings with lots of numbers, it may come in handy as well. You may also be able to remap keys from certain games to the numeric keypad, although there isn't a very strong reason to do that. Is their keys are very similar to the keyboard. Maybe so you can have more right lines keys, like maybe you like the layout better than the keyboard itself. Apart from that, it's just an interesting historical gadget worth having a look at. So the traditional way of loading games in a spectrum like this one is to connect a cassette tape to the input audio port over here on the side and just go through the loading process. That can be fun a few times and for nostalgic reasons, but these days my favorite way of loading games is this little gadget. This is at Div MMC. And it's a fantastic little gadget that you connect in the back and you can load all the games that you've loaded up in this cute SD card with the logo and everything. There is one potential problem though. 
Whenever you plug in devices like this on the extension port in the back of the Spectrum, a lot of them will use the clock signal on the connector. For some reason, maybe they were in a hurry, when they created this Spectrum, they actually left that particular signal unconnected. So devices that rely on that clock signal will not work on this particular model. On later models, they fix that, even though I've read that you know, the strength of the signal perhaps is not very good and they may have some issues. But on the Spanish Toastrack 128K Toastrack model, that signal is just not connected. Fortunately, this particular Div MMC, the future one, um, doesn't rely on that clock signal precisely for that reason. So it works in all spectrums. But just in case, I like to um, mod my 128Ks to provide that clock signal so it works with the majority of the devices. So. Let's do that now, and then let's see how this works. So we want to go from pin number six of the Z80 to that number eight on the expansion port. So this is the one. I'm going to tin the ends of the cable to make it easier to solder in place. And now the other end. I need to tin the pad a little bit to make sure the cable can be soldered correctly. There we go. We should now have a clock signal on pin 8 of the expansion port. All right, we have the div MMC plugged in in the back. And to load something, all we do is press that red button, and it brings up a menu on the screen with all the games and whatever things you put on that SD card. So just to try it out, let's go to load Manic Miner, of course. There you go. It was instant and it worked beautifully. Let's try another one. I press the button. And now I'm going to load another one of my favorite games, Night Lore. Oh no, what happened? <laughs> so this is something you may run into with this computer. This is the first computer to offer 128K, so they have a few compatibility issues. In particular, the 128 uses access to certain ports internally to control which memory gets mapped where. Some games, unfortunately, use those ports for different reasons. Apparently, the Ultimate games use them for debugging purposes. So when the game starts, they send some commands to that port, and they change memory on us, and this happens. So to disable the memory port switching and make it just as, um, as a plain 48K computer, what we need to do is type the following command. We need to type out, so out 32765.48. That sends that data to the port and disables the memory switching. So now we can run Nightlore again, and it should work correctly, just like you would in a 48K. And there we go. All right, I think I'm going to play a game. So there you have it. We had a good look at this ZX Spectrum 128K Toast Rack. We made sure it worked correctly. We didn't have to make any major repairs, unfortunately, but we added the clock signal to the extension port, which is pretty useful. And then we looked at some of the things that make this particular model unique. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until the next video, see you then.